Well, you know, it's the month of May. It's a beautiful month and it happens to be Older Americans Month. This is the month that a national celebration of older Americans. But unfortunately, there's a dark side to the month of May and everything about being an older American because unfortunately, there are so many people out there that decide to prey on older Americans to uh, separate us from our money. Not good, I, real, I don't know how to stop it. I don't know how to fix it, but here's what I did. I decided to call the police. Yeah, see, see what I mean? Stay tuned, you'll find out why. Hey, good morning everyone and welcome to a special edition of Scan FYI. So it is the month of May and it is Older Americans Month and that is absolutely something that we will be celebrating at Scan and of course on a national level. But because it is Older Americans Month, we do wanna shine a light on the fact that there are a lot of bad people out there who are always looking to separate us from our hard earned money. And I did call the police. So say hello to Detective Michael Aquaviva. Hello. Good morning, thank you for having me. Oh, my pleasure. So tell us a little bit about you. You are from the Monmouth County Prosecutor's Office. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing there. I work for the Monmouth County Prosecutor's Office. I'm in the Financial Crimes Public Corruptions Unit. I've been with the office since 2013. Uh, prior to that, I worked in a local municipality as a patrol officer, as well as a detective. So I have a lot of experience in law enforcement. All right, and probably, unfortunately, a lot of experience in financial crimes as well. Yes. All right, so here we are. We're gonna talk about some of the top financial crimes that uh, scams, we should call them scams, also known as Absolutely. crimes, that are specifically targeting seniors. And let me just mention to everyone listening out there, we have an excellent article and some excellent resources, and I'm gonna put links to everything in the Facebook comments, as well as YouTube, so you don't have to memorize anything. But um, Detective, let's talk about some of the financial scams that you're seeing a lot of these days. I would like to. Um, in, there's a number of them out there. In Monmouth County, we've been seeing some more, uh, some different scams that are, have been more prevalent more recently, especially since COVID has started because a lot of our seniors are at home more. Right. Um, so one of the one of the scams that we've been seeing a lot of more recently is the we call it the grandparent scam. What that is is um, the senior is contacted usually after uh, normal business hours to make it more difficult for them to verify. But they're called and they're told that their grandson or granddaughter was perhaps in a car accident and um, had to go to the hospital, not really injured. And they've, they're going to be arrested maybe for DWI or something like that. And they need bail money to get out of jail mm -hmm. or um, they're going to wind up being in jail uh, for the weekend before they can see the judge. So they're creating this sense of urgency. Usually it happens after business hours, the usual nine to five, Monday to Friday, to make it more difficult for the person on the receiving end to verify whether it's true or not. Then what they do is they'll usually request cash or they'll request some type of instant payment, such as a, a green dot direct payment, um, Walmart or something like that. Um, and well, once that home. money is gone, yeah. they, 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 they go as far as to send a courier, an unknowing courier to the house to pick up money, just a person that picks up documents. They think they're there to pick up documents. They're picking up money and delivering it. But the one thing I, I will say for, the, for them to be on the, on the lookout for, too, is a lot of times they will have information about you. They'll know they could, I mean, in five minutes, you can look somebody up online. You can verify where they live, who they're married to, uh, family members. Right. So they're right. going to call and they're going to say, hey, uh, your grandson, Johnny, was in a car accident. And they might even know what town Johnny lives in, which would lead you to believe like, wow, this is something that's legitimate and something that's really happening. Um, I've had people tell me that when they get this particular call, the grandparent scheme, that often uh, the, uh, the, the person who's calling them, the, the police, it's a, even a foreign country. Oh, yes. 
Oh, yes. It, it, it could start out of the country. And a lot of times when the police get involved after the scam has already occurred, we have to gather the information on, you know, where did the call generate from? Where did the money get sent to? A good majority of the time, it winds up being out of the country. So there's a couple things that I, I would recommend for the person that's on the other end of this call. And the first thing would be call the person who they're calling about. If they're your, calling your, your about grandchild. Grandson, yeah. call them. Absolutely. Is right. everything okay? If you can't get them on the phone, perhaps they're married or they have a roommate or whatever, call that person. If you can't verify it right away, I would say to call your local police department. Have the officer, an officer respond to the house. An officer that responds to the house can very easily check whether um, your grandson, uh, you know, Johnny is arrested up in Montclair. Um, it can be a police to police call. Mm -hmm. Hey, do you have this person in custody? Was there an accident? Probably within a minute or two, it could be verified whether this is a true story or not. Um, and that, and then if it's not a true story, you would have the officer there anyway to take a quick police report on this scam attempting to be you know, perpetrated on you. But one observation that I, I have to, that I would make to people is again, just like the IRS doesn't call you up and say, send me an Apple gift card. I don't think it's a policy of any police, legit police department to actually ask for, you know, a green dot card or, or, or inst an instant payment. That, that should be your red flag right there. Absolutely. That's just what, not the way we do business. Uh, absolutely. Where most police departments, like where I worked and, and the way that, that it's done is, if let's say that that person needed to be contacted and say Atlantic Highlands, let's say the accident happens, we'll say Montclair, we need to contact this person in Atlantic Highlands. Montclair police would call Atlantic Highlands police. They would say, can you go over to 123 Main Street and notify Mrs. Smith this incident happened. Here's right. the information for them to contact. That's how it's done 99% of the time. So you're absolutely right. Right off of the start, if you sit back and you know you take take a deep breath. I, I know nobody wants their grandchild to go to jail, right? But In the nobody heat of the wants moment, that. You don't always think about the logical. The, the logic. correct because what these scammers are doing is they're trying to create that urgency, and they're trying to get you to bypass the normal steps you would do right. verifying things to create the urgency to let you make the victim make a mistake. Okay. So logic, you know, emotion kicks in, logic goes out the window, but that's, so Absolutely. number one takeaway from this is really uh, call the police, call your local police department. Yeah. Call the local uh, police department and verify if this yeah. is true or not. That, that, that would be the best thing mm -hmm. to do because Every town in, in Monmouth County has a police department that could respond uh, right away. Okay. Have them come over and, and verify this because I'll tell you to, to a person, a, a law enforcement officer, we're, we're there to, to help. And any law enforcement officer would rather come to your house to take a few minutes to verify whether this is actually true versus coming to the house after the fact to say, I just got scammed out of six thousand dollars that i sent in bail and i don't think it really happened every law enforcement officer would rather take that you know scenario a to to verify what happened versus a fraud report all right so tell us about another very common uh scam that you're seeing targeting seniors another scam that we've seen and especially with the spring coming is the the contractor scam what happens there is usually um a, a person will knock on your door and unsolicited, unsolicited. and they'll say, um, you know, Hey, I'm, I'm working in the area. And these are the usual things they're looking to do. They're looking to seal or repair driveways. They're looking to make roof repairs. You know, they might see a shingle off of the roof. Hey, we can make this repair or they're looking to make chimney repairs or to clean chimneys. Those are the usual scams. Once the person starts talking to these people, they realize that they really don't know the area. Usually they're from out of the area. It's not usually a person from the next town. If you're, if you're in uh, Middletown, it's not usually somebody from Keensburg coming over running a scam because if they are really doing a scam, 
they're, people are going to know who they are, right? They know right. the cars right. and the trucks. Right. Everybody knows each other. Absolutely. So it's usually somebody from out of town and they really kind of don't know the area. Then what happens is they, they'll say, hey, I could seal your driveway for um, $250 or something like that. The products are not good. It's usually you know, not a good repair or, or anything like that. Then they come back to your door with a written estimate. And they say it's, uh, you know, uh, 850 instead of 250. And then they try and confuse you. No, this is what you agreed upon. I never said that. Look, the estimate says 850. It doesn't say 250. Now the senior is, is feeling confused. They're saying, wait a minute. And you have these two people at the door that just did work. And before you know it, they're paying or they're trying to negotiate to pay less. And the guy says, listen, I, I understand that this is a mistake. Um, how about 600 and we'll just call it a day. So you didn't get the 250 repair that you really paid for because they didn't do good work and you're paying more money. Um, that's basically how those scams are operating. Um, one other thing to watch out for is what they'll do is a lot of times um, people like to pay by check. Mm -hmm. So they'll agree on um, say $440 or something like that. By the time the check gets to the bank, they alter the check and the 440 becomes 840. They okay. deposit it. And now the person doesn't even realize that they've been a victim for a month later when their bank statement comes. So they see their statement. Yeah. So what's the best way to protect you? Again, this was an unsolicited uh, offer to, to do some work on your home. So what's the best way to protect yourself from something like this? Use contractors that are verified, people that your neighbors have used, your family has used, um, maybe people that you can go to the, the Better Business Bureau and make sure that they have a, a good grade, that there are no complaints. Um, you know, again, it, it's if it's a local person, a lot of times, like, uh, you know, this time of year, people are cleaning gutters. Mm -hmm. And a guy might walk across the street and said, hey, um, I've clean your neighbor's gutters twice a year for the last 10 years. Um, you know, you, maybe you look at their truck and it's a 732 phone number. Um, you know, you're doing a little investigation. Then you call your neighbor. Mrs. Smith, have you used this kind? Oh, yes. I've, I've known him for 10 years and I've used them and, uh, and, you know, everything's always good with him. I think you would be okay with that. Uh, but you know, if all of a sudden nobody's used this person in the neighborhood, there's no real logos on the truck or it's an out of area code, things of that nature, I would say pass and, and get people to work at your house that are verified. None of these repairs that usually they're offering to make are stuff that needs to be done today, right? We're talking about cleaning a chimney, making a, a shingle repair, uh, sealing a driveway. That doesn't need to be done today. That can be done by a verified contractor. But I think also it's important to remember that when somebody comes to your house and wants to do something unsolicited, I didn't call you and ask you to do this. You're just knocking on my door. That, that's Absolutely. a little, mm, that's suspicious. For me, that's suspicious right there. Absolutely. Absolutely. And when it's, when it's too good to be true. It's always too good to be true. So you have to remember Correct. that as well. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And, and, <clears throat> excuse me, you can always call the police because maybe, um, maybe the police need to know about somebody lurking around the neighborhood, right? Absolutely. Most towns have ordinances on um, contractors or other people soliciting door to door. So, you, you know, you could definitely call the police and say, hey, I just got a knock on the door from this guy offering to do this. They'll send somebody over. They'll verify a lot of times whether yeah. their license yeah. is valid. Um, whether they're there legally or not, um, and, and things of that nature. So yes, they, again, the officers would rather come over and you know check these people out, basically to make sure that they should be there and that they're not looking to scam people. So I think that's a, a great idea. You know what else? We, you and I talked before before we went on the air. We talked about how some people have this. Oh, I don't want to bother the police. No, nah, I don't want to bother them. But yes, bother the police. Absolutely. I mean, that's that's because I, I, I know what my mother and father would say. No, no, no. The police are busy. They're you busy. guys are you know, catching bank robbers and doing everything that that, that police do. And, 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 and yes, uh, 
you know, they're, they're out there, you know, answering calls and things. But like I said before, any officer would rather come over and verify whether this contractor that knocked on your door is legitimate or whether it is true that uh, you're being contacted about bail for your, your grandchild rather than that call three hours later that says, man, you know, I, I think I just got scammed out of, you know, $6,000 for bail or $700 to seal my driveway. And because, I mean, at that point, most of the time it's too late to recover the money. Mm -hmm. So no, you're absolutely not bothering the police. And, you know, again, a lot of times these people do these things, non-business hours. And I'm not saying a scam can't happen at, you know, uh, 930 on a Thursday morning I, or, or whatever it is. It very well could, but a lot of times it'll be that Saturday morning or it'll be that call and on at Friday night, because again, it, in the person's head that's receiving that, oh, I, you know, I, I can't call the court and verify it. I, I can't call the Better Business Bureau because I know they're there nine to five Monday to Friday. And the scam artists know that. But the police are always there for you. And that's important. Always there. Always there 24 seven. Every town in Monmouth County has officers that will respond 24 seven, seven days a week. Now, of course, there are you know, more scams out there than grains of sand on the beach. And we could talk about this for the rest of our lives. And uh, I'm again, I'm going to send you an article with the, um, I'm going to link to an article, the top 10 financial scams that target seniors. And I encourage everyone to look at that. But detective, the last thing I want to, I want, I would like you to share with everyone, what do you do if you suspect that you have been a victim of a scam? What do we need to know? What you need to know is don't give out any of your personal information unsolicited or, or if they're calling you, don't give out any personal information, social security numbers, dates of birth, insurance numbers, um, anything like that. If you feel like you've been the victim, call the police and make a report. And then from there, the local police department will many times contact um, the prosecutor's office. We work hand in hand with the local police departments, um, you, you know, verifying these scams, get, gathering records, things of that nature. Um, every county has um, uh, an organization. I'm sorry, go ahead. The Adult Protective Services. Yes, the Adult Protective Services. So a lot of times, I mean, anybody can call Adult Protective Services directly. Again, um, but, you know, a lot of times after the initial police report is made and uh, the local department is figuring out what's going on, they will make the call to Adult Protective Services directly. They provide a lot of services. Um, also, I, I'm a firm believer in having family members or people you can trust to call to say, hey, uh, is this a good idea? I, I have this link. They're saying my social security number it has been compromised. Do you think it's a good idea to click this link? Well, you know, let's, we can look at this in the morning when I come over and take a look at the email. Um, nothing is emergent. And again, just all the, all this, the same theme, I guess, from uh, with you and I speaking, they're attempting to create urgency right. to, you know, once that you, you know, that the blood pressure goes up, the anxiety goes up, people start making mistakes. And that's what these scammers want you to do. Right. You know, that's exactly what they're hoping to do is confuse you, create anxiety. And unfortunately, it often works. So you're if absolutely we, right. If, if there's maybe two takeaways that you get from our, our discussion this morning, call the police whenever you're even the slightest bit concerned that something might not be right. And under no circumstance do you ever give your personal information to anyone on the phone, because no legit organization, whether it's the IRS, Medicare, they just, they don't do that. And if somebody rings your bell and wants to do something for cheap, mm, well, no is a complete sentence. You can say no anytime you want. And you know, the other thing I'm going to remind you is, you know, you don't have to answer every call that comes to your house. If someone is legit, they're going to leave you a message. Don't worry about the phone. There's a, a gazillion robocall scams as well. So you don't have to run and answer the phone. You know, it's, it's the month of May. It's Older Americans Month. Let's take care of ourselves. All right, everyone. 
So Detective Michael Aquaviva, thank you so much for being with us today. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Sharing your wisdom, and I hope everyone takes it to heart. Okay, everyone, remember, if it's important to you, it's important to us. I'm Andrea Tarr, and you've been watching a special edition of Scan FYI. We'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.